Hey guys, Max Scoville here, and uh, I guess they decided to make a Marvel Universe MMO, which is kind of a big uh, big surprise, I guess. I mean, DC just came out with theirs, so it makes sense. Anyway, we're here at uh, 21st Amendment Brewery, and I'm a huge Marvel geek, and that's Brian Michael Bendis over there. If you don't know who he is, you probably don't read a whole lot of comics. Yeah, so I'm here with Brian Michael Bendis, who's... You're going to be writing the Marvel MMO? Is that, is that, is Wait, that right? Just so you guys know, he's crouching down to yeah. talk to me. It's, it's very I've never felt shorter in my life. Yeah. He's actually stooping down. It's, 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 it's polite, but... That's what's going on in my head. Yes, I'm writing the MMO. That's pretty badass. You you have some experience with trying to curate the entire continuity of the Marvel Universe. You've worked on the, the Ultimate Timeline. That's mm -hmm. one of the things that I first got exposed to with the Ultimate Spider-Man. 130 well, um, issues of that. That was... Yeah, that's only in retrospect does it feel that way. Uh, back when the Ultimate Universe was first created, uh, it was a one issue at a time. In fact, Ultimate Spider-Man was only a six issue miniseries to start. A lot of years, a lot of years of Marvel continuity, and you're trying to adapt it for gameplay with it letting people actually control characters. That's that's nuts. Um, what I'm really curious about is what's the aesthetic going to be like? Because you've got if you're going to be covering major like events from the Marvel Marvel timeline, like you got Secret Wars lined up with Civil War. Like you're gonna have some, probably some fashion issues there. Like what? What's the? Oh, would you say the aesthetic? Is? I mean, as I said in the in the while well, we talked earlier, um, there's gonna be an opportunity for the player to create their own continuity. Uh, you're you're gonna have a lot of control over the characters and um, and their look and their feel and and the look of the world around you and that's really gonna inform a lot of how you play the game, which I think is gonna be just heaven for Marvel fans. Uh, you know, and gamer fans, you know what I mean? But I think Marvel fans are just going to be thrilled. And it's free to play. Yeah. You can't really talk too much about which characters are involved. Can you... Well, can you... who we mentioned. We mentioned, uh, we, you know, obviously we're not surprised that Cap, Thor, Iron Man, Spider-Man, none of that surprised. But we also said, we said Squirrel Girl, Nova, um, and we just, we put those names out there because I said, you know, I think that says a lot about what kind of game it is. This is this is the biggest like roster for any Marvel game to date. Yeah. By the way, that's not o the only of the characters. That's just a hint of the characters. What kind of a scale are, you, are we talking about geographically? Because the Marvel universe is kind of like a it's almost like an overlay of, of the existing universe. Except you've got like you know you've got Valhalla and you've got the Shi'ar Empire. Closest to an actual real universe in comics. You know what I mean? That is kind of one of the biggest differences between the DC universe and the Marvel universe. DC plays in Metropolis. Marvel is in New York City. You know, like I'm writing Moon Knight right now. It's in LA. You're getting shorter and shorter as we go. I know. All right, it's ridiculous. So, anyway, yeah, that this is the reality, by the way, guys. No show business bullshit here. Anyway, so, um, uh, so yeah, so and but there's pockets of uh, genuine fantasy, like the Savage Land or Matterport or you know, uh, Subterranea, all these places. Uh, I'm, we're not saying where you're playing yet. Uh, we will tell you that no stone in the Marvel Universe will be left unturned.